Hi, welcome back to I and I Studio. Um, I should say the new I and I Studio or the uh, Sugar City I and I Studio. The reason I say that is we're in Crockett, and Crockett is famous for the CNH sugar plant. And I've noticed some of the shops along uh, Pomona Street are called Sugar City, um, and I kind of like that. So. We just finished moving out of our studio for the past 30 years, which was Benicia. And that was um, the original. Well, not actually even the original I and I studio. I had a small office space, 300 square feet, that I shared with a friend of mine before I got my large 2,800 square foot Benicia studio. Um, my husband and I were there for 30 years. We raised our kids there for 15 years. Recently, our landlord here offered us 800 additional feet, and we took that because we wanted a place to convert to painting storage and um, a viewing space for possible uh, gallery visits from gallerist consultants and that sort of thing. That enabled us to completely let go of the Benicia studio. So although we'd been working here in Crockett for almost three years, we maintained the Benicia studio and we were able to afford it by giving workshops. Um, and Anyway, it's uh, hard to let go of something you love uh, and something you've built. And it's liberating to let go of something you love and something you've built and something that's accumulated 30 some odd years of storage. And I would say with the move, not counting the paintings, I probably eliminated 75% of my stuff. Um, so my studio today isn't in the best of shape. I still have little bits and pieces of the move that I have to integrate into my space and clean it up a bit. But I thought this is a great opportunity to talk about building a studio, what you need for a studio, creating a studio space. I get asked quite often by students, how can I convert my garage into a studio? Uh, I have a spare room in my house. I want to convert to a studio. What are your priorities in a studio? And that's what we're going to go over today. Studios come in all shapes and sizes. And um, I'm a large scale painter. I like a large studio if possible. If I didn't have a large studio, maybe I would be working on my kitchen table and I'd be making small collages. Whatever you can do to satisfy your creativity is valid. You don't have to be a large scale painter. It's just something I love and I'm fortunate that I found this space. So um, I want to talk about some of the things that you might need in your space and what you notice when you walk in the door is tables. These tables were hand-me-downs. They're large wooden tables. They were probably dining room tables that have been repurposed and they have wheels on the bottom. See? So I can move them around. You'll also notice I have little tiny baker's racks underneath the tables. That's for storage. And what I store here is paints, brushes, things that I need to get at immediately when I'm painting so that my supplies are at my fingertips. Another really great thing about my tables is they're on wheels and I can separate them. So I can get in between the tables or I can push them together to create one large table. 
So that's something to think about. Walls. This is a really important part of my process because I paint both on the walls and flat on the tables. You get different effects when you paint on the walls, such as drips, and on the table when the painting is lying flat, you're going to create pools and puddles. I like both of these things in my paintings. You'll notice the paintings are hanging directly on the wall. What I do to make this possible is we had this wall built when we moved in. We put a piece of OSB or plywood underneath the sheetrock. This enables the screws that we put in the wall holding the paintings to bite firmly into the wood and not just be dangling from the sheetrock. And that makes a very solid spot to work on. This is the second room in my studio. Again, you can see that I have the tables. In this case, one large table and then one short table, which is just a six-foot fold-out table. And the six-foot fold-out table, although it's very cluttered right now, works well if I want to sit down and do the work. These taller tables on wheels are a bit tall for that. So in here, recently, this wall, my main painting wall, was just sheetrock and did not have the OSB or the plywood under the sheetrock. So the nails, the screws kept sagging. Uh, the paintings you see here are on panel. They're, oh, probably 40 pounds each. And they kept pulling the screws out of the wall. So instead of tearing the sheetrock down and putting plywood underneath the sheetrock, we went right over the top of the sheetrock with plywood and painted it. So I'm ready to go with a really nice wall to work on. And, you know, my other table, and as you can see, I have a, a canvas that I'm prepping down um, on the tabletop. And I generally do prep my canvases on the tabletop because I will put two or three coats of gesso. Then I will trowel a coat of gesso with molding paste to get a real smooth surface. We built storage racks in the back. So I have a lot of paintings at my fingertips, but it just wasn't enough. We put some track lights in here. The ceiling is not that high in here. As a matter of fact, it's just shy of eight feet. So um, in here, I have both fluorescent lights and LED lights. So my lighting is pretty good in both rooms. I also am fortunate enough to have a, a couple of windows and during the day, I like to open the curtains, and at night, I close them. So that's another little thing that you need to consider for your studio. What kind of lighting are you going to have? What kind of workspace? Wall space, table space, storage space, whether for your paints, brushes, or your paintings, and... Um, What did I say? Wall, table, light, storage. Another little uh, thing that I like is I like a little coffee pot, teapot in my case, and a microwave because I may be at the studio all day. And I brought a little refrigerator in to store my water and my lunch for the day. 
I've covered my floors with ram board, which is a heavy cardboard, um, also with vinyl, because the floors are, are quite nice in here. They're a beautiful laminate floor. I have a fan to cool it off. I have a little heater to warm it up, little electric heater. And what's next to this is a dehumidifier. This takes the moisture out of the air, uh, preventing the paintings from molding. And I have had that problem in the past, especially in Benicia. So we do monitor the moisture in the air and keep the dehumidifiers running all the time. I have a little sitting area. It's nice to relax when you're painting or if you have friends over. And I have a little desk, which is great. I can bring my laptop over and uh, do work or run uh, Zoom classes from the desk. Carts, that's another thing. I find that rolling carts are very convenient. I can put whatever I'm working on in the rolling cart and roll it with me around the table. When I'm gessoing a large canvas, I put the big bucket of gesso right there in the rolling cart and it's following me around. So that makes everything pretty convenient. So, is there anything else that I'm missing or forgetting? Storage clutter, it's always a problem in studios, and I have to really fight to keep that down. You'll notice I also have a bookshelf, never enough space for books. And um, I have some things around the studio that are just little personal objects that I've collected or that I happen to like around me. I've pretty much keep the wall space for my own work, and that's because oftentimes gallerists or art consultants will come in, and I don't need to confuse them. I want them to know what's up on the wall is mine. This is a baker's cart, baker's rack. You can configure these with uh, the, the particular width that you want and the height that you want. This is my lifeline for everything I use when I'm painting, from mediums to steel wool, peroxide, um, staple guns. I've got little carving tools, um, and it's great because I was able to fit that into a little narrow hallway that otherwise wouldn't have a lot of use. So that works really well for me. This space, this little breezeway space here, this will be converted into a workshop area with little partial walls that come out, tables. We should be able to probably accommodate eight to 10 students in this space when we get up and running. So that's something the landlord is working with us to achieve. We do like to give workshops and um, it will be great to be able to do it right here at our studios. Signage. I had a sign made, that's mine. And you see that box there? That is for um, oil soaked rags so they don't combust. It's a safety feature. I love to have those. This is Chuck's studio uh, across the way over here. So we're close, but not sitting on each other's heels. And then straight ahead, this is the new 
storage, INI Studio storage. Let me take you there. We have a table saw, chop saw. We used to make a lot of stretcher bars. We don't do that anymore. So I don't know if we're going to be getting much use out of the table saw. My husband's not willing to let it go just yet. But we did pretty much give up uh, making our own stretcher bars. If you uh, want to know how to make stretcher bars, we have a video here on YouTube that you can see. And um, you can make some money doing it. So if you're trying to pay for a studio space, that's another way you can make money. I would just caution you that they are so in demand you may not get any time to make your art, and that's the problem we were having. Okay, as you walk in, we have a little sitting area, and you can see we're still trying to absorb these boxes. I have to go through the boxes and see what I can eliminate. Um, again, a small refrigerator and a microwave, little kitchen area, and this is a great big wall for viewing artwork. And I want to show you the wall. Oh, they've actually capped it off so I can't show you. Maybe. Okay, I can show it to you here. This is the wall, sheetrock. You can see behind the sheetrock is a probably, looks like it may be a half an inch OSB. And this is what the nails can bite into when I go to hang something on this sheetrock. Okay. Um, here's the storage rack system that we built. I'm going to back up a bit so you can see. We have a lot of paintings to store. And what we needed was about 50 linear feet of storage. So I think it's work working out really well. We didn't go all the way up to the ceiling with these. We've got our folding tables up there. Down here, the dehumidifier. And across the way, we have uh, shelves to store our tools, some paint things some old family photos. <laughs> we all have a bunch of stuff. Uh, and then a couple of flat files tucked underneath. This, which is cluttered with stuff that needs to be put away. Um, this is a little Ikea table and four chairs. So if we have workshops or something, we can sit in here during lunch. I could uh, pull out a folding table and some resin chairs. So that's about it in a nutshell. Sometimes I have no idea where I'm going, but I always get there, always wind up somewhere. Okay. So please go to your studio, practice, practice, practice. Painting is a practice and practice makes perfect.